Tato Brandin Chair was a young girl with big dreams, committed to education and had the support of her parents and her community. But this week, life was brutally seized from her in Bamenda as a consequence of what many have described as a senseless war. Fegang Baudelaire was a young man with big dreams. He was fending for himself and family, but life was brutally seized from the taxi driver in Moliko as a consequence of what many people have called a senseless war. 14 students are responding to treatment in Boya. Their amphitheater was hit by an improvised explosive device as a consequence of what many have called a senseless war. Many people, including women carrying children, were pulled out of a transport bus in Kumba and beaten for disrespecting a lockdown. It is another consequence of what many people have called a senseless war. And again, several policemen and gendarmes, just as several fighters died this week. The killing of security forces near Santa this week was brutal. Why do Cameroonians continue to die in what many describe as a senseless war? To discuss this and to find out what the ordinary Cameroonian have as benefits from the 2021 state budget or what the people's share of the state budget is, we are Senator Leke Besongo Akemfo Philip. Senator, welcome to the program. Thank you. We have Senator Henry Kemende. Senator, welcome to the program. Thank you. By Senator Henry Kemende is Ojong Stephen, my colleague, editor of the Media Newspaper. Welcome to the program. It's good to be back on Press R. We also have Joe Temoncho, who is senior journalist working with CRTV. Joe, welcome to the program. It is my pleasure, Edwin. To set the ball rolling, let's have Guy Roger Nana, who read through what the papers reported during the week and had this summary for us. <laughs> Hello, The Horizon says the presidential couple get thank you messages from the Kupe Mwaninguba community in Cameroon following the safe operation of a conjoined twins, an operation that was sponsored by the presidential couple abroad. The babies are back in the country. They were said to be at the Gynaco Obstetrics and Pediatric Hospital in Yaoundé for observation. The Herald this week reviewed the head of state's stay in power. It focused on President Bia's 39 years in power and still counting. The Post tells us that the CPDM Northwest begs President Paul Bia to join the 2025 presidential race. The Post on Friday reviewed the bomb blast incident that took place in the University of Boya, injuring 11 students. The vice chancellor in his outing on the paper is said to have called for students to maintain calm and assured that measures have been taken to avert any such attempt in future. Meanwhile, the same paper highlights that a four-day retreat was organized by the armed separatist groups, Anglophone civil society, and religious leaders in Toronto, Canada, from October 29th to November 1st, to seek ways of collaborating to achieve a peaceful settlement for the ongoing armed conflict in Cameroon. The Sun newspaper adds that the Toronto Conclave actually sparks hope for the Swiss talks given that various resistant factions in the Anglophone conflict were brought to table. The same paper again highlights a colorful peace march led by PM Dion Gute in Bamenda during the celebration of President Bia's 39 years in power. The Guardian Post Monday, however, highlights that the Southwest governor maintains silence over kidnapped divisional delegates kidnapped in Dian five months ago, but threatens to sack absentee MPs and mayors in the same division. The same paper in its Thursday edition, still on the issue of the kidnapped delegates in Dian, the Southwest governor plays the ostrich and shifts the blame on the population. Sadly enough, the Guardian Post newspaper says the cultural festivals in the Southwest and Northwest region are phasing out due to insecurity. The insider takes us inside the threat of imported frozen pork and chicken. We are told that the upsurge of illegally imported frozen pork and chicken is threatening local production. Our schools continue to be home to extreme deviant behavior. Mutation says about 30 students were dismissed in Lycée de Mendon in Yaoundé over the consumption of drugs. Several questions asked on how to handle these trends amongst young people raised by the paper. 
Nouvelle expression newspaper states that the anglophone crisis sparks fear on campuses, stating that several students have fled for their lives after the bomb blast incident that took place in Boya. The paper equally talks sports as it tells us that according to Patrick Mboma, his former co-player with the Lions, Samuel Etofis, is the fresh air that Fekafoot needs during these times of turbulence. Realité Plus calls on the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, saying the country needs to fast-forward its road projects, equally stating the urgent need for clean public toilets for the guests who will be trooping in for the AFCON 2022. Our lone national daily, Cameroon Tribune, tells us about the opening of the third ordinary session of the 2021 legislative year, with focus being on the examining and adoption of the project finance law for 2022. On Friday, Cameroon Tribune talked about the expectations of the National Assembly as per the organization of the 33rd AFCON on Cameroon soil. The President of the Senate and that of the National Assembly, respectively, have called on us all to avoid all negative usage of Internet and social media platforms, put all hands on deck and use the medium to promote the country positively. Thanks, Giru Jinana. Now, gentlemen, you have followed what the newspaper supported. Let me start with you, newsman, Joe Temonto, to say what caught your attention. Glad to get back to Toronto Forum on Peace to normalize the situation in the Northwest and Southwest regions. It is spiritually uplifting that uh, the clergy men who were in attendance, as well as the peace brokers, uh, saw the need, at least, to chart the way forward. Even when some hardened their hearts, I think that the fact that the talks started is already uplifting for those who hope to find long-lasting solution to the problem in the Northwest and Southwest region, so that they, those regions can come back to where they were before November 2016. Did those, some of those people refuse to come for the national, major national dialogue? A handful of them expressed worries that uh, they were not saved or the security was not there for the major national dialogue. Now in Toronto, uh, those who were there especially Chua Yaba, who was one of those who hardened the heart, equally gave hope that there are openings for them to continue the dialogue, even when uh, his attitude towards the dialogue was not condescending. Okay, thank you, Joe. Let me come to another newsman, Steve. Okay, I, I want to follow with the, the last speaker. The Toronto retreat, to me, was another missed uh, occasion, given that those who are actually fueling the war back home were not in the attendance. We did not see Chris Anu, we did not see uh, Pastor Sako. They boycotted. To them, the Toronto retreat was a non-event. Oh, I'm expecting that when they'll meet again in Dublin, Ireland, they were able to convince these people to be part of it. We can start taking them serious when we we'll see everybody, especially those who are failing the war back home, taking part in the, the dialogue. Why, why do you think they don't want to come? They're refusing to attend. I, I wouldn't know, but I, I understand that they are making a lot of money by sponsoring this war. People collect a lot of money and hand to them to sponsor the war. And they believe that any peace initiative will stop or will block the funnel through which they are getting this money. I think that is the only motivation. Otherwise, I don't see why a war that has lasted for over five years, somebody will not want it to end. Sad indeed. Senator Kemende? Yes, it's, uh, what intrigues me. <clears throat> is the fact uh, that <coughs> I didn't see government players there. I, my fear is that let this not be another situation. You mean at Toronto? At Toronto. Let this not be another situation where we, the Anglophones, we met in the All Anglophone Conference, came out with beautifully drafted documents, and they ended nowhere. You see, the real person who is supposed to be and be at the forefront of any such talks, the government is supposed to show interest without which all what we will do, we will all end the drawers. Just I remember what happened in the AAC1, AAC2. In fact, before it, it, it morphed up to where we are today, it's because of, uh, I, I can say, the resistance of the government to make sure the problem is solved according to the people. But the, the government, the stand of the government is that Cameroon's problem should be solved by Cameroonians and at home. Yeah. Yes, but we have, tried, cleared, we, have tried a couple, we have tried a couple of times to see that Cameroonian problems are solved by Cameroonians. But then, when you have, uh, 
one of the parties that is actually recalcitrant. You, 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 find, you find people made to feel that they're irrelevant as far as defining the, the, the policies by which their country is managed. You see, you see, people feel a sense of irrelevance because you will decide, you will sit on the table, discuss everything. But then, when it comes to implementation, uh, no, the government just pushes it uh, off the table and say, well, that was just to maybe to calm people, to make sure that you people do what pleases you. And that is OK. That's not it. But it's tell you bear No, no that's, that's not the subject of the debate now. No. I just asked you to comment on what on what caught the attention, caught the attention yeah. this thing. Yes, I'm now with you, Barista uh, no, Leke. No, no, Sorry, no, no, Senator no, Leke. No, <laughs> Senator Leke, I'm with you now. What caught my attention? In the newspaper. Yes. Um, the first thing that caught my attention, the newspaper review, is the fact that uh, frozen chicken, frozen uh, pork, and other items are continually being imported into our country in spite of the fact that we have the capacity and we have the means to rear these animals and eat them here, given that those ones imported are very dangerous to our health. And so I don't see why Cameroonians should go on importing dangerous products into the country where we can build good pig uh, piggery, uh, poultry, poultry farms, farms and then uh, develop these things to develop and promote employment. Because if we keep importing, we are destroying <coughs> home-based industries and therefore smashing down all possibilities of creating employment opportunities to the youth. We watch the newspaper or uh, TV reports every week and the similar scarcity of this uh, of chicken in the market. Yes, if there's yes. scarcity, uh, Edwin, we have to develop the strategies akin to building the capacity of Cameroonians to develop these poultry farms here at home and not importing it. Scarcity doesn't mean that people go importing from other people and you kill home-based industries. No, it's very bad. This is Cameroon, and Cameroon must grow. And who has to uh, promote local industries? I think the private that, sector is there, the government yes, is there. Yes, the government is there. there. The government creates an enabling environment for the private sector to boom. The, the ministry in charge of small and medium size, you know, they are <coughs> all there to do all of that. Trade and industry ministries, they are all there. They boost us. Let's now move on to our first topic. Tato Brandin, Boya University explosion, the killing of a taxi driver that is still in Boya in the southwest region, the killing of the, uh, uh, the uh, policeman in Santa, Senator Kemende. Senator Barisa Kemende, bad news again this week. Bad news, Edwin, very bad news for Cameroonians as a whole. Some people may think that this issue, the Anglophone crisis, is only a matter of the Anglophones. It's affecting everybody. It's affecting everybody. Either it affects you, uh, either you are infected or affected. It uh, touches on every look at people who are, ki who are killed. You don't, there's no discrimination. The bullet does not discriminate. Uh, Brandin, Brandin, Brandin chair, uh, Tato, could have been a Francophone child. It's just that it has been happening in a very coincidental, happening in a very funny manner whereby you don't see uh, a Francophone falling, uh, a Francophone child falling uh, in, in, in the face of this crisis. But then, bullets don't discriminate. I have seen, I'm witnessing a situation where the various armed groups, the Amber Boys as they are called, they are into a competition as to who kills more or who does, uh, uh, who does acts that <coughs> public attention to himself. Yes, yesterday we were talking about no pity. No pity has gone uh, into, into, into slumber. We don't know when he will resurface. When he will resurface, it will be another, it will be maybe it will be another disaster. We are hearing now of Akuru. That, that's, that's, you hear them really brandishing, uh, being excited over, over, over the, 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 the video, video footings they make. You see, it is now a matter of competition to see who kills more military men, more armed uh, forces. It is, uh, it's an unfortunate situation. I think that we need to start taking this thing serious. It is not, I cannot say uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we are living in a country where we can describe ourselves as uh, in one boat and moving towards the same, the same destination. I think we may be in the same boat, but looking at uh, different directions, which we need, we need somebody. We need somebody. I don't know whether that person will be inspired from why, but we need somebody to come in and to make sure that we are in focus towards the same direction. If we call ourselves a nation, without which we should do what is necessary not to live as a nation. Now, um, Steve, why would somebody go and plant oh, a bomb and improvise explosive device in the university campus? in an amphitheater, or use it in 
an academic institution? Uh, I want to think that the the separatist fighters or the Amber Boys, as they, they are called, are getting a, a bit frustrated. The war is getting too long. They were told in the beginning that it was going to be short-lived. It would take a maximum of about two years. It is taking now more than five years, and uh, there are no indications it will end any time soon. They are getting frustrated, and there's a narrative now that the war is localized in the Northwest region. They are looking for a way where they can get the Southwest also involved in the war. I think it's a strategy to, to, to create panic and a school boycott in the University of, uh, of, of Boya. And when the students of the University of Boya, you know Boya, the socioeconomic activity of Boya revolves around the University of Boya. If you bring down, if you shut down the University of Boya, you have shut down Boya. So in their frustration, they are looking for a way of, that's my own... Uh, the reading of it. Yes. Yeah. They are looking for a way of uh, also shutting down Boya, the way Bamenda is going. I think that is the only motivation they can have to, 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 to do that kind of uh, thing that nobody can, can accept. It's really condemnable. It's not acceptable. Yeah. Senator Lekin? Yeah. Several things in Boya, too. You saw the incident in Kumba, where people were removed from a bus and beaten. Some carrying children. They're saying that they did not respect lockdown. Then the uh, university, I mean, the driver who was also, What do you think is accounting for this in Boya that we thought was really like an example to emulate by other towns? Good. You see, over time, Boya had witnessed significant uh, calmness, relative peace. And uh, this seemed to have touched the very fabric of those who do not like peace, of those who oppose peace. And so they don't find it normal that activities are going on fairly well in Boya. And since they do not like school going, they feel that to puncture the smooth functioning of schools, especially the University of Boya, is a major breakthrough to their own armed conflict gains. So that is the major point they are holding, that if we stop all schools going, it will call for international attention. But international attention has been given enough to the conflict, and nothing is going on to their advantage. They feel frustrated, and so they want to destroy whatever has been put together as far as school going and peace measures are concerned. So that's why you find these here and there bombs in a taxi. They jump into a taxi, they drop a bomb and dump out. So that that bomb should now create panic and people now die. They go to a university campus where students are learning, they drop explosives inside and then they disappear. So what we can do now is to call for enough vigilance. Okay. We, so that we, we shall get to, authorities we shall get to should, possible solutions to yeah, this problem. Good. But Joe, Yes, the situation in Bamenda with Bandin, you know, uh, we've seen the action taken by the, uh, the Delegate General for National Security, Martin Bagangeli, punishing the uh, policeman who is said to have been responsible. But it was a similar situation in the Southwest region. Why should these problems be coming up? I mean, from your own reading. Is Edwin, the military has not responded to calls to spare the Edwin, you would bear with me that uh, the Delegate General for National Security is an exemplary disciplinarian. He has posed a number of acts, especially against police men and women who do not comply with the law. And so he's communicating, sanctioning the one who, the police officer who was involved in the shooting and killing of Brandin. It says that it's a continuity, it's a continuation of the sustained effort to restore order in the police force. That notwithstanding, it is a tragedy. And from the standpoint of a society where virtues have been turned upside down, there is every reason for us to question why the repeated tragedies. I would say that repeated tragedies because many lies have been told to the boys who are in the bush, to the separatists. Promises have been made to them by those who are teleguiding the war, and those unfulfilled promises have brought frustrations, and they are venting their frustrations in several ways. Again, if you are a responsible person and you are driving a car, imagine a society where there is no law enforcement officials. It will be anarchy. It will be a dog eat dog society. And so if you are called to order by a law enforcement official, why not uh, guard 
your car by the roadside and, uh, and listen to what he is asking for. If it is the documents of the car, he has the right to ask for them. And so when you become wayward and evasive and you shy away from your responsibility, apart from your failure as an individual, it has an extension into the society in that a passerby like Brandine was shot dead. And these are the consequences of frustrations in a society where lies have been told and retold and people are not willing to learn their lessons. If these separatists were willing to open up and learn that they have been told many lies, 2017 they said no certificate will be recognized and that UNESCO was going to cancel all certificates in Cameroon. Did it happen? It, 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 they promised that they were going to move to Boya before December 2018. Did it happen? And we can continue to the coming back of the cattle from the grazing land. <laughs> Why are they not learning the lessons and knowing that peace is better than any other thing? When you kill, what do you benefit from the death? I saw a snake in National Geography swallowing another one after killing. Why do they not take those corpses and eat? That's, that's hard. Steve? Yeah, I want to ask the question. Have police been authorized to shoot when they stop a vehicle and the vehicle, the, the driver refuses to stop. I want to, I want have, to make you understand that that is yeah. a war, that's a war zone, it's a conflict zone. So anything that happened, the police can be shot the law, at or uh, not. The yeah. laws have not been changed. We are not under. Are police a state, supposed to shoot? We are not under a state of emergency, Steve. Yes. We are not under a state of emergency, and the laws have not been suspended. The laws that apply to the police, this way of the Mongo, apply still apply that way. No, but that, those are police. Want, like the case and, uh, on, are, in Santa, they have been killed. You want them to watch? No, but and then be they should first of all begin by making what is legal. If they suspend the laws, if we get under a state of lawlessness in the Northwest and Southwest region, they should be declared so. Maybe under a state of emergency or whatsoever, where laws are kept aside to a certain ex to a certain extent. But if until we get to that point, the laws that apply throughout the country apply to Northwest and South. And what is unfortunate about this situation is that they are shot, but that that that's an Brandin chair uh, uh, tattoo. He's the son of a policeman eh, who was shot by another policeman. You can imagine the father was the father worked in in Bello. That's where he got entangled with him with the mother, and he delivered uh, uh, Brandin. And uh, the, 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 the the father died later on. And to, for him to hear that his son, uh, why his daughter has been shot behind by a colleague of his, uh, that is really unfortunate. What is it that the laws have been suspended? And we have different different branches of the police or law of law enforcement. The ones that are controlling traffic in town. They are not the ones on motor on motorized. They are all not the ones on motorbikes. So the one, the job of that of, of uh, that was done. The one was done by that policeman who shot who, who shot who shot Brandin. Is supposed to have been done by uh, what they call routier. That's a, the policeman on uh, on motorbike. A motorbike. After you stop a vehicle, if the vehicle cannot stop, it goes where you look for other means by which to track down the vehicle. You can use communication gadgets. You can even call another police unit this way to intervene. To Would you give the number of the car? Give the number of the car. Even the motorbike is there to assist you. The motorbike is there to assist you. You don't take it for yourself. He took a motorbike without even telling the motorbike rider that he was going to shoot. So you just started, you, you take a passenger behind you who is who said you should pursue, you should go to That is recklessness. And along the way, you start firing behind him without him knowing that okay. he was on a mission like that. It was and recklessness. Had, they, and they, that they, is why the delegate that, general has punished him. And, and I think in And then he took that bike alone. So I don't know whether it was his personal matter that he was pursuing or it was that of the police on control. And like, behind a motorbike, and then you start firing when the motorbike man you don't even know that you were many in Investigations are, going for a war from. are ongoing. Let's wait for the results of the investigation, or that by the government of Cameroon to be able to conclude that well, this man was wrong or right. Well. Now, Steve, mm. what also people have been commenting on is the reaction of the students of the University of Boya the next day. Teams at the hospital, the Boya is hospital. And I listened to one of them saying that no matter what, he's actually hurt with the serious phone, but he said no matter what, he has to go to school because he has exams to write, that nothing can stop him going to school, that he will only be killed to stop him going to school, that he has to go to school. So they are still very courageous. They are still very motivated. What the the the, the separatists or whoever did it are trying to do, I don't think it will work in the University of Boya. They are very determined that they will go to school, that nothing can stop the University of Boya functioning. But as I commend it, Steve said earlier on, even uh, uh, Senator Leke confirmed that there's been peace in Boya, I mean, relatively very calm. That's not a situation in Bamenda where there are some sporadic attacks. What makes Boya different? You are an elite and senator from the Northwest. Why are your own people not making sure that peace returns? Well, we say there have been peace. <laughs> peace is not uh, necessarily the absence of uh, a war. 
if she won't say they have been peace. People are boiling within. People, anything can happen anywhere where we are because of the injustices that are taking place around us in the Cameroonian society. So when we say there's peace, we are just merely seeing the absence of war and conclusion. Okay, there's, there's an absence of fighting. Goya, in Goya. Why is there not no absence of fighting around the northwest as is the case? Well, in it's just like uh, we uh, of the political parties, we have uh, opted for peaceful measures of resolving what today is the Anglophone crisis. We have been advocating for what could have actually a proactive measure which could have actually stalled this uh, Anglophone, the war that we are in. But then. Uh, it so happened that along the line, we have been overtaken by people who think differently that they should put an end to this problem by using force. How, what, the extent to which they will go is only time that can tell. But what I will prioritize is that we should, we should be listening to the people. We should be listening to the people. In fact, for the first time since joining the Senate, uh, Edwin, I have felt a sense of irrelevance as a politician in my own country. In fact, I ask myself whether there's going to be another country where I will have to contribute ideas that can really work. Because you see, you're contributing ideas towards resolving a crisis, <coughs> and nobody is suggesting something better than that, but they're hanging on what is causing the crisis. They're hanging on what is making us fail. That is a problem that I'm having now, and it's, it really bites what is your, What is your suggestion? The suggestion, the suggestion well, is what is the solution now, because I'm moving to the next topic. Yes, the suggestion yes. Is... In fact, the solution has always been <laughs> the issue of bringing power, power to the people, getting power closer to the people. We signed uh, this, we started this union, this nation, by a federation, and it was working. Where this idea of going to unitary state came from, I don't know where it came from, and we have been advocating for federation, and we will remain on federation, even though some people are saying that it is already late. But then, it is better late than never. Let us do what is necessary. You can <coughs> take somebody, something which belongs to somebody. There have been self governors in uh, what used to be called uh, in the Southern Cameroons yesterday. People have lived self governance. They have even conducted democratic elections and changed government without a police, without any gunshots. And then you take them, you absorb them, you bring them now into a unitary system, and then you start dishing to them what you have taken from them, bit by bit, through decentralization, through whatever you call. And, and bit by bit, they are losing their. Where were you, you, you doing the major national dialogue? Myself, I consider well, I consider major national dialogue irrelevant. It was just, just no, I tried no, to. You can't say that people came and contributed ideas like you it and the majority were taking. Opinion, where now, did the ideas go to, Mr. Edwin? Where the, the ideas, ideas are being implemented. They are not implemented. Are implemented. <laughs> All right, thank They're you, Senator. Yes, you started talking about what you think could be possible ways out of this uh, gloomy situation. The yeah. attacks have been recorded. Can you uh, develop what you started? Yes, sir. Uh, you see, when it comes to a conflict situation like the one we find ourselves in the southwest and northwest it is biting and affecting every fabric of the nation's economy it has paralyzed to ground level the economies of these two english-speaking or anglophone regions and therefore it is high time we thought of those very long uh, long-lasting solutions to bring these situations to a halt. First, I want to think that Cameroonians must have interest and confidence in their government and their nation. Cameroonians are losing interest in their nation and their government, which is not correct. Nobody will praise your government or country if you do not do that. We have to praise our country. This is our nation. This is our motherland. And so, therefore, let every Cameroonian contribute massively to see in his or her own small corner to bring peace by implementing and accepting the implementation of the major national dialogues proposals which are on the ground, except you have other things better. But if you have, you would have said it at that time. Whatever we had as solutions to the burning crisis given during the major national dialogues Please, let Cameroonians give peace a chance and allow those solutions prevail so that you can only compare two things, Edwin. You cannot just take on people have proposed solutions. You have not even seen the majority of these solutions, how well they will come out to be, and you just start acting and say, no, no, we don't want that one. We want this one. Now, you say you want this one. What if the third party says, no, I don't also want your own? Those problems will... The cacophony everywhere. Cacophony, yeah. So we must, uh, we must be calm. We must be patient. We must act like civilized people and give peace a chance, as I say, so that those proposals yield the necessary and required fruits that will give us the peace we so much desire. Thank you. Joe, the possible way is out. 
there is the need for us to re-examine the cause that the deadlock has taken from 2016 to where we are. And that is I want to indicate helping. that in 2016 you were part of the discussions with the... Yes, uh, I was a member of the Interministerial Ad Hoc Committee for solutions uh, to the problems proposed by Anglophone Teachers Syndicate within the subsystem of Anglophone education. And we made a number of proposals. I can bet you that among the 22 proposals that were submitted to government, only one has not yet been resolved. Which and which is that, is that one? Uh, the National Education Forum, where uh, education policy executioners in the Anglophone subsystem and Francophone subsystem are supposed to come together and look what is identical in each subsystem and develop it at the level of the curricula so that they sh the curricula for both systems should be problem solving. And that has not happened because the enabling environment is not there. Those who initiated it are largely in prison because they became outlaws. And so if that has happened, it is for us to rethink and know that the colonial masters who brought us together are still there. Their position has not changed. And if we kill ourselves, even in billion, it will mean nothing to them because they are not those losing. But we as a nation, what is the way forward? The way forward should be patriotism. We should think Cameroonians and be true to ourselves. There are some of us who say, yes, the war is bad. Out there you say the war is good and you are supporting it. We have to educate and re-educate the grassroots, especially the separatists, because they have distorted history to say that unity no longer exists. It is true an error was made, and let us acknowledge it. 1984, it was supposed to be a decision of a referendum of the Senate or the, the lawmakers to change the name of the country. It was done. It was by law. Okay. Thank you for that update. It was done. But at the same time, people are expressing dissatisfactions that <coughs> the union no longer exists. Why not put the fact on the table and see what is in a name? If there is the need to re-establish the name, it should be re-established rather than get into killing. And so we as a nation and citizens of the nation, we have to put honesty in what we do and in what we say. Okay. But, but, no, okay. Please, I'm giving you one, one more minute to come out of this thing now. I, I, what, yes, I'm giving you one minute, but hold on. I'm starting with you, Senator uh, Leke. Yes. Of the UPC party, <coughs> you yeah, start with now. UPC party. I'm asking, you're talking of patriotism and everything. Yes. Those guys who are in the bushes, they, they may want to be patriotic, but their stomachs are uh, uh, they're hungry. They need jobs they are not having. Don't you, are you not seeing some sort of frustration that is also fueling this conflict and that measures should be taken to improve the situation of these children in the, who are taking arms against the state? You are very correct. I feel for them. But I want to tell you that you don't take arms creating danger, creating death to other citizens of a country and even to yourself because you do not have a job. There is no record anywhere in the world that a government has been able to employ all its or her citizens. Now, people must be creative. People must be able to work to help the nation help them. You ask yourself, what have I been able to contribute to my own nation's building? You don't just take off arms and become a lazy man so that they should know. What I am saying is that those guys in the bushes, they are our citizens. They are Cameroonian, and they deserve every right to be taken care of. Like they also have the, the responsibility, responsibility to take care of the yeah, nation. Sure. Thank you, so Senator. So there is agriculture. There are other avenues that they can plunge into and make good out of these. Senator, your mm -hmm. one minute is here. Yes, Mr. Edwin. In fact, when His Excellency, the Minister uh, Paul Tasson was in Bamenda about two weeks ago, in fact, he met a very, very simple analogy of uh, a situation. And that he, when he became, when he get, got to office, he asked that two professors, one Anglophone, one Francophone, to bring their mathematics slabs and let him see and understand why uh, Francophones will pass exams into Polytechnic and Anglophones will not pass, despite the fact that they, they scored uh, very high marks at the, at the GC advanced level. And you know what he discovered? He discovered that the Anglophones in their own syllabus, they are far, they are, they are, they are using a uh, cake uh, syllabus as far as mathematics is concerned. Anyway, the Francophones, even though it's not current, it is a little bit... Uh, it's, not, it's, the, it's, it's, not a, it's not it's, a cake, it's, it's just that they are more advanced. Let me, let me, let me just ask a question. Is it, is it today that we, we have to discover that? 
That's why you talk about education policy. Is it today that we have to discover that there was some sort of, there was a problem like that that was preventing one segment of a population not entering into a particular There's school. always a beginning to something. There's always a beginning, but it took us time. How, why did it cost so much time? If something is happening uh, repeatedly, and we don't we see people not getting into a particular school, we should ask ourselves, what is causing it? Who are the people who set the exams? The person who set the exams, they don't know that anglophones are not using the syllabus, they're not using the same syllabus. Why could they not correct it? This situation is happening now in the and Southwest. It's like a situation where somebody has been pregnant on your toe. You are crying that is pending. You talk every you say that is pending you. It's pending. And he keeps telling, he keeps waving, waving, waving with the back of the hand. And at the moment that you push him off, because you cannot withstand the pain again, he now says that you have found war, you have declared war against him. And he starts now fighting you. This is exactly what is the situation. <laughs> People will not, uh, somebody will not stand on your toe permanently. And you don't, you keep complaining. Senator, you complain and thanks for reading of it. So this is I said, give one minute to conclude. I Stephen, say, I'm sure you want yeah. to conclude too. Please take one minute. I want us to admit that uh, what we are witnessing now, what is happening today, it's happening because the government has allowed a bad situation to decay. Uh, the government has not been able to sit back and ask itself, why is it that the solutions I'm proposing, the solutions I'm implementing, why are they not working? Where am I getting it wrong? The government seems to, to stand on a particular position. It doesn't want to shift. A, a position that is not working, that is not satisfying the people who are aggrieved, the government has to revisit its position. The government has to ask itself, why is it that my solutions are not working on the field? Why are they not accepting my, my, my position? Okay. The, tr the truth is that, if you recall, uh, the, the senator mentioned the All Anglophone Conference. The people who brought us where we are, the Funchas and the Monas, they spoke at the All Anglophone Conference in 1993 in Boya. And they said certain things that the government must take into consideration. It is those things that are pushing these boys. Let's not blame these boys. Let's not push all the blame on them. It is what Foncha and Mona, go back to the letter Foncha wrote when he was resigning. Go back to the letter Mona wrote when he was resigning. You see the solutions to this problem. Let's go to okay, those, okay. let's go back to those fundamentals. Well, the, okay, the, the, the government, have, the government, have, the government must not it. always think that it, 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 should, it should dictate that, solutions I'm, on the other part. Let me find out from you. Yes. You're talking about what they were proposing and what we were proposed, but during the dialogue they proposed, George just acknowledged here that 20 two decisions were taken and 21 have been implemented. Mm -hmm. Why are the others not also shifting a bit so that government understands they are shifting and people have to shift? That should be food for thought no, as we no, move no, on. We, no, we, wrong no, we, we have to be We have to be, we have to, we have to be wrong solutions. No, Senator, uh, we cannot say there were wrong solutions entirely. The honest aspect of it, which I always emphasize, is that there was a hidden agenda, which government was not aware. Yeah, there was okay. a hidden <laughs> agenda. If it were the problems of the common law from the perspective of the lawyers per, per se, it should have been understood by government, and a number of acts have been posed in order to solve the problems of common law. Per, common law from what? Hmm. Yeah, you have touched, touched by no, please, no, that I, is not I, a topic I, I, that I, I'm coming. Now. Yeah, so, this, uh, the education so, subsystem yeah. for Anglophones yeah. was another problem. Yeah. The issues that were brought to the table were looked into by government, and so you cannot say that government has shown bad faith or is on the same position because government has been looking for solutions as the problems come up. Thank you, and John. what is certain is that you cannot allow your, detect the, your detractor to set an agenda for you. And that is exactly what government is doing. And that is, what, that is why the war is the Parliament is, is meeting. Why the war is persisting. Let's, let's keep playing for time. And let's Barista, you, you may, you may want to know that at the, at, the, at, the, at the major national dialogue, they said they were not going to they, they, they were not going to Always. table the the, 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 Steve. the structure of the country. <laughs> the they, uh, it was, it was, it was because some people stage to, they they walk out. Because, because, can, we, to can we say we are out of and this topic now? Now, Senator, why are you here in Yaoundé? Why are you now I'm in Yaoundé? Let us now continue our program talking about Parliament that is meeting now, and it is going to be voting another state budget. That's the budget for 2022. People are asking how. Do civilians, the women on the street, in the villages, benefit from this budget that are voted in air-conditioned offices, uh, prepared in Yaoundé and so on? Now, when you're preparing the budget, Senator Kemende, what part do you say is for that man on the street, or in the street, or that man, that woman who's working a farm? Yes, uh, Adrian, I must uh, confess that our budget is uh, yet to be productive. We have a budget that most of it, more than half of it goes for uh, consumables. 
you understand what I mean? Consumables, things that are used for office, running your office, paying of uh, staff, paying of uh, civil servants, and all whatnot. That is not what a state budget should really. A state budget that is intended for the common man in the streets. That's not what a state budget is supposed to focus on. We have a very large civil service, and we have a lot that goes in, in terms of maintaining those, that, that, that civil service. And that's where our budget goes. <coughs> a budget that is supposed to be forward looking, that can bring economic growth. Is, a, is what should take care of the common man. We call it a public investment, investment budget. budget. Fine. Is that is the, the, yes, the man on the street. Yes, exactly. What do you consider when you're voting that budget? But look at How it. How do benefit? In fact, the benefit of the man on the streets is supposed to be actually, even the farm to market road can even make the common man to be, can empower the common man. But then we don't have the farm to market because you need to see the road to Bamenda, Edwin. I came, from, I came through that. In fact, government is not even doing anything to show that it can even alleviate the hardship of the people of the Northwest. We repair the amount of money. Why am I asking you a question? You have just simply avoided <laughs> I have said something. I ask you when you are voting the budget, what do you put in that budget to be as the benefit of the man who is down there, the downtrodden? Okay. You know, the, we, 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 <coughs> on investment, on investment, because it's investment that brings economic growth. It's when you invest in profit-making uh, enterprises that can create jobs. That is when you are now taking care of the common man. Okay, thank you. Senator Leke. Yeah, thank you. Um, let me take the cue from where my colleague just talked. Um, a budget is adopted and promulgated into law by the President of the Republic. And at that point, the budget takes its maturity for execution. What you are talking about is the, uh, the investment, the public investment budget, budget, which takes into account the specificities and the needs of the people. The budget looks at each region has its specificities. And so the investment budget goes thus. There are about three or four levels. You have the national, the divisional, the subdivisional, and the, the regional. Level. Uh, regional. So that's how the budget, the investment budget trickles down there. Now, for I speaking, I come from the Southwest. And therefore, the investment budget there in the Southwest is supposed to take care of the construction of more schools, the construction of hospitals and health centers to cater for the needs of the people, the construction of roads, good roads, when we talk of roads, good roads, so that you and I can drive smoothly and our cars last longer, the construction of good markets where we can sell products easily and boost, you know, production. The construction of and revamping of industries like ailing industries like the CDC, Pamol and the rest. But we are meeting a deadlock, sir. We are meeting a deadlock here because of the crisis. Let us look at yeah. this. You have, you have told us how you're preparing, what the budget uh, looks like. Handles, yeah. We're going to look sure about the deadlock. Sure the crisis. Now, yeah. the no, crisis, the, the insecurity, problem, listen. Joe Temoncho, Joe Temoncho. Now, you've listened to exception. what the two uh, men of law have said about the budget, the public investment budget, which is right. supposed to look at the roads, hospitals, <clears> look at the schools, uh, give subventions to farmers and so on. From what they have said, you have been observing, is that what happens? I'm a reporter, not a supporter, to begin with. And what is certain is that when you talk of welfare services, you have health care, you have education, you have road network, infrastructural development. And where we are, we cannot say that for 2021, nothing has been done in terms of infrastructural development. When I get first thing on the ma in my mind is AFCON, African Nations Cup 2022. Adequate preparations have been done in terms of infrastructure. When you get to hospital services, they are not the best, but efforts yeah. have been made in that domain. And again, it is a year that COVID-19 came in with an agenda that was upsetting to governments and households. And in the wake of COVID-19, that necessity to retouch the budget in order to meet the, challenge, the challenges because activities were grounded had to come up, and that is why the head of state introduced um, an ordinance appealing to the lawmakers to give the latitude for the bond market to be open, appealing to the lawmakers to give the latitude for money to be borrowed under concessions and non-concessional loans. <clears throat> that is what has salvaged the economy. And when it comes to the benefits of the ordinary man, you cannot quantify it without talking about those welfare services that are rendered by government, the road network, the hospital, education, and I think the strikes have been made, even if they are not formidable. Yeah.
Thank you. Uh, 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 Steve, go, go on. What, 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 yes, I, 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 was, I was going to say that, first of all, I admit that a budget is just a, 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 a provision, an anticipation of government revenues to be collected and is anticipated expenditure. It's not money kept anywhere. The budget tells us what the government plans to do in perspective. Uh, I must say that as a reporter for over 15 years, what I've been listening to successive prime ministers, because probably next week the, the sitting prime minister will go and deliver the, the national economic policy of the coming budget. I've not seen those programs delivered. Take for instance, it was in 2004 that I listened to 2003 or so, that I listened to Prime Minister Peter Mafane Musonge talk about the social housing project. Until today, that project has not matured. It was about in 2009 that I listened to one minister of sports talk about the Paul Bia Stadium. Until today, we are hosting the AFCON in a few months. That project has not matured. The Lompanga, that this, here now is about the energy and water sector. We have been hearing about a project to connect water from uh, the River Sanaga to Yaoundé. It is now over 10 years until today Yaoundé still suffers water, water, water crisis. They have, they have built the Lompanga Dam, they have lived, built several dams all over the country until today the problem of energy has not been solved. So I want to say that successive budgets of this country, each year you see the budget being increased, but it doesn't impact the common man. Okay. What the, what the government, excuse me, what the government needs to do First and foremost, provide water, energy, and roads to its citizens. We don't see these things, these ab absolute necessities in our country. The roads are not there. Even you go out of Yaoundé just two kilometers, there are no roads. Have, have, you, have, what, you, gone to, have you gone to Bafo? I've, I've visited recently? the whole of Yaoundé. Have you seen a road from here to Bafo? I've visited the whole of Cameroon. I've okay, gone to, no, I'm just giving an example. The roads are not there. Done as if the roads are not there. In Boya, in Bo in Boya nah. today. That, have you visited yeah. Kumba Manfe? <laughs> what are you saying? I visited the whole of Yaw the whole of Cameroon. Nothing has, been, nothing done has been done over the years. Kumamafe, the road has passed finally after <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. no, it has passed. Be rational. Okay. Be rational. Excuse me, I don't, need to be see, realistic. No, let just no it's, let's not be escapist. <laughs> the, the truth is that the government has not provided water, energy, roads sufficiently to its citizens. Now, before we and judge that, the that government, is part, that is part Steve, of the cause of this crisis. Before we judge the government, how much was collected? Don't, and the don't forget, you are from the northwest region. Can be able to take you are from the northwest region. Of course. They started talking about the ring road since over 50 years ago. There you I'm are. Talking, yeah, the, the, there you are. There are projects that have not been accomplished. But there are those and, that we, are and we as reporters now, will the also Manfe report Acquire them. Road, please, there, there, is no, accomplished projects there is no road linking Manfred to Acquire since those that are accomplished. Now, no road linking Manfred to You should to be acquire. able to report on accomplished projects Even here, and those that have not no, been accomplished. Let's, let's be serious. There's no road linking an important city like Kribi to a Bolova, which is the regional capital of that same region. You, why are you only looking not, at this? No, uh, I'm talking Senator, about, we, have, we have seen that, no one side that the many, many projects agenda. have been executed. Look at Some the two sides of the Many have not been executed. Also. Well, we want but to know want, how the, see, please, the successive budgets have been I want us to narrow it down the to the northwest and southwest regions where most of you, of us, come from. That this budget too has had serious challenges, Senator Leke. Yeah, uh, the budget has got serious challenges, just like I said. And um, I'm still saying that the government has to sit up and increase its uh, her investment budget in order to meet the demands and aspirations of the people of uh, the Southwest, where I come from, and the Northwest. In spite of the fact that there is uh, the ongoing socio-political uh, upheavals in those regions, it does not mean that the people should remain in a quagmire. The government has to put its feet down and take a decision to do what is best for the people. Now, we are talking of Emergence 2035. Look at my native Libya, where I come from. We don't have tar roads. How do you think that we feel? We feel very bad. It's it's very bad. Is it the so same area where... I come from Libya, Libya. 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 When you, when you I think you look saying, at the two sides follow, of the coin. To me? Which is what I'm saying is that, <laughs> is that the government has some efforts have been the made. Which is the other side? To well, take a decision. The government has the way with that to make sure that its policies and measures are put into place. The government cannot be different. You raised the question to the Minister of Public Works. I, I remember did. vividly. What yes. did he tell you? I put this question to the Minister of Public Works, Minister Nganun Jumensi. And I asked him, Mr. Minister, in spite of the fact I commend your efforts for the construction of roads in the Southwest, 
But what went wrong? That you did not connect Bakeba in the manual division to get the road start up to the BLM division. He told me that the contracts were given out to two contractors or two teams of contractors. And these two teams of contractors abandoned the contract for fear of the, because of the insecurity within the region. But I don't think that, and then he asked me to, if I, should ha if I have uh, contractors I should bring, I don't think that's my role. The, the minister the is talking the as the government. The government is supposed to do that thing, to make sure that the roads in the Libyan are tired. There are military men there to put the, 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 the insecurity at bay, put those guys disturbing at bay, and get the roads of the Libyan tired. This is what the people they want. You must do what the people want, that's it. Because you need the people's support. Because we are in a fair world, a welfare country. <clears throat> and a welfare country works for the interest of her citizens. Thank you, Joe. Yes. I was going to compliment the information from um, our colleague, uh, Ojong Stephen, that for the Ring Road, uh, the African Development Bank has signed an agreement with the government of Cameroon over 100 billion CFA francs to continue the construction of that road. That was done three months ago, yes. if my memory is not failing me. And so the Ring Road project is on course. And don't, I, I, don't, I, I will also, compliment. Also Stephen, just hold on. No, speaking, let him inform Cameroonians that the Minister of uh, Economy, the Minister Delegate, the Minister of Economy was in, in Bermuda if, recently and told the Bermuda population that... Two weeks ago. Yes. And immediately leave. Assure peace, assure peace, and you get the ring road. Mm -hmm. So signing of striving on that convention yeah. is immaterial. That is the enabling so, so environment. Are, he, he, the minister should be the enabling environment the for the projects that, to that be carried on. They should be the enabling environment for the projects to Who be carried on. Who provides the enabling on. environment? Do you forget the fact See, that please, caterpillars were burnt? Do you know that the caterpillars uh, and uh, heavy duty machines for road construction were burnt at one point because people were at work in order to accomplish their task given by the government to them, contractors lost property, and that impeded work. We need not lose sight of that fact. The absence of the enabling environment is a problem that we should go on for, because if the enabling environment is there, road builders will do their job without fear. They will do their job without reticence. And do, do I am recommending that for government to propel the economy, yeah, there is every reason to, the yes, to the pay internal debt. The, the loan that was signed is the same road that <laughs> would have been supervised 30 years ago. 30 years ago. The, the wishful, think, <laughs> wish, yeah, wishful thinking is there, but the realities on the ground, we know that it was not done. Okay. Let's look at the way that things should be done in a better manner. Mm -hmm. Steve Ojong, we have agreed that the public investment board is that of the part that goes to the people that are supposed to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. We have also seen that a lot is done, but there are so many challenges. But let's look at the way forward. What should be done to make sure? Don't forget also that at times... Budgets are provisions that we don't even get the money to execute the projects. Uh, I, I want to think that the government is providing palliatives for problems in the country instead of going to the root causes of the problems and solve them. There are fundamental issues that have to be addressed. The government should go to the fundamentals of the problem. If you think that you, when you hear that there's a crisis here, you run dead, go to the fundamentals. If the government goes to the fundamentals, I bet you that this problem will be solved. Let the government go to the fundamentals. The government should do some self-introspection. Ask itself, why, where am I going wrong? Why are my solutions not accepted? The government will see, understand why the solutions are not you said accepted. That we're talking about the public yes. investment budget. What should be done to the make public, sure that I get to the people on the grassroots? The, 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 the fact is that our government is, there's a lot of distributive injustice. The government should be just in the way it shares out the budget. If you look at successive budgets of this country, the budget of the South region, for instance, that has a population just about Mizam Division, has always been almost doubled the budget of the Northwest and Southwest put together. I mean the investment budget. Recently, I was surprised that the elites of the South region met to try to see size of what investment has been done in their region. They are still not satisfied, but over the years, the budget of that South region, which is just like about Mizam Division, has been almost twice the budget That's combined from... Appointment. Yes. So if you imagine that the South region that has been having all that money allocated to it is crying of development, then imagine places like the Northwest and Southwest that... S Senator, Senator Kemendi. In fact, uh, we have created regional councils, and the regional councils are everywhere in the 10 regions of the country. 
let the government has all that it takes to come up with a bill amending the powers amending the, the, the law regarding the council code <clears throat> as it is and giving the councils the regional councils more power and give them more finances to develop their various regions we should not have a situation whereby somebody determines on his own personal accord to help uh, to assist uh, one of the TV stations, Jizion Cat, as we saw in social media, or helping to construct a uh, uh, some whether one other technical school here with a lot of monies, where we don't know exactly under which budgetary head it, it, came, it comes from, and then even if it comes from a budgetary head, what what have you done with regard to other regions, with other such establishments found in other regions? So we should give powers to the various regional councils in writing and in the fiscal. In, disbursing the monies so that each regional council manages its region according to the money that is given to them and accountable maybe the central government could be sending team of auditors come out and see how effective that is. The government provides 15 percent from the beginning. It has not been yes. given. I, Recently I, I, it was the minister of the who, been, who offered cars to the to the, to the regional I've been, council. I've been, asked, I've, been, well, I've been attending regional council meetings and they are asking the 15 percent is not even there. And even the minister explained to us in the, in the last last session that the 15 percent is not the way we think. It is not going to be given a 15 percent of the budget. They have things that they need to take away from it, the taxes and all whatnot. <laughs> that it is not the way we consider it, that it is not actually the 15 percent. And they, it appears they have been given 7 percent. So the thing is just to empower, this is the federation we are talking about, uh, Edwin. But now they are giving the federation in piecemeal in terms of just giving some small powers to the regional councils. <coughs> the federation should give, there should be absolute federation, whereby you give budgetary allocation to every region to manage it the way they, the way they want to now, manage it. Senator, the population Senator what is your own view? What, is it, what should be the way to make the budget trickle down, get down to the people at the base? Yeah, what I think is Cameroonians should have confidence in the government and in the nation and know that the government is there for the interest of the people. And therefore, the government should, on the, on the other <coughs> hand, to be very flexible and be prepared to people and know that it is the people that has surrendered their sovereignty to the government. And therefore, the government should listen to what the people are saying, which is positive and make do a better situation for our own welfare. Therefore, in order to do this, let the government give out enough uh, percentage of this investment uh, 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 budget so that it takes care of those specificities, those relevant needs of the people according to the different regions. For example, take the southwest where I come from. There are areas of the Southwest which badly need roads. In fact, our cry in the Southwest, a majority of the Southwest divisions don't have roads. Look at Ndian, look at the Libya Lem, and look at Kupe Mwaninguba. In those divisions, yeah, talk about about, yeah, you talk now, about cars, cars. What people about the people go to school? What about people who want to that's carry where, their cocoa to the farm? Yeah, we are talking about farm to market. That's why the PM cannot, cannot get some buyers. Yes. So we have, uh, we have a problem there. We have a region. Now even look at schools. We have a region like West Region. Almost all the divisional quarters are linked by good tar roads. Yes, I don't know how it came that way. Now, all divisional quarters in Western Region are linked by good roads. Why can't we have in order, in order, in order? We have about four minutes to separate. I will give you thirty seconds each. To conclude, I'll propose that Joe and Senator, uh, 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 that's Senator, Senator Leke, Leke, you talk about the uh, the killings. What is the way forward? And then you talk about the public investment budget. I'll start with the 30 seconds, Joe, because of the time constraint. It is very appalling that um, a number of tragedies have been recorded by the taxi man, bomb blast in the amphitheater in the University of Boya, a killing of Tato Brandin, and we can keep naming them. What I'm appealing to the separatists is that we should not live a life of pains. Let us be able to forgive one another. Know that wrong things have been done and we cannot continue to do more wrong things in the quest for a solution. We shouldn't harden our hearts. Let those who are involved in the Toronto Peace Talks open up to others who have hardened their hearts. And let those who are in the bushes at least consider that human life is important to be preserved. And that if we have differences, the solutions should not lie in killing because when you kill, the next person who shares the same idea will not be killed and the killing will continue, but the idea will <coughs> not be changed. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, so I would like to tell our brothers in the bushes that they are very important to the nation Cameroon and they are very intelligent persons 
and that's why they do what they do. It is their own way of expressing their love for Cameroon. Therefore, please, can you lay down your arms and do everything to maintain peace for the interest of us, your <coughs> brothers and sisters, for the interest of your parents, for the interest of the nation Cameroon. Don't allow yourselves to be manipulated. Don't allow yourselves to be fooled because you are not fools. You are very intelligent citizens of this country and you can contribute to the nation building of the Cameroonian nation. Did they listen to you? You are a senator. Yeah, they, 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 so in, they are. So, please, how many of them have really <laughs> dropped their weapons? No, as I'm, talking to the, as I'm talking now, those who are connected to them will tell them that it, the, the, the senator is appealing to their good senses mm -hmm. of judgment and conscience so that they should stop all of that because over the years it has not profited anybody. Instead, it has caused us enormous pain, enormous losses. The economy is down. Even they themselves, they are suffering which they do not deserve suffering. They deserve to live better life. When is the last time you went to your own hometown, I believe? It is impossible for me to drive to... Le I come from Lebang. When did you go to Le Lebang? The last I time? cannot go to Lebang anymore because Lebang seems to have grown into a bush, a choking bush. Ah, you are Even my phone lives here in Yaoundé. Because they place a bush? The place has grown into a choking bush because of the tension and terror perpetrated by... By this, I uh, thought they should be cleaning the bush. Clearing the bush now. <laughs> <laughs> they should clear the bush down. You are living where somebody has they cleared the bush. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, yeah. we're concluding on the budget. Yes, uh, on the budget, I would like that there should be decentralization. Let every region take care of itself. Let us have the money. Let the people be before people, personalities that they can hold responsible should they not manage the budget very well. We should uh, stop this thing of even people dishing out, doling out the national budget according to their whims and caprices. And then as far as the crisis is concerned, there is nothing wrong. We are not, we need not to be ashamed if we have made a mistake. We need to go down to the foundation. <coughs> we're building the skyscraper, I mean, when the foundation has developed a crack, the crack. Let's examine the foundation and it is nothing shameful going back to the drawing board and say that what, where did we make, where did we, where did we, where did we go wrong? And repairing that foundation before we continue the skyscraper. We are building on a rock, on a foundation that is becoming de is become defective and has been declared defective. The head of state in some people might even accepted it in, in Paris. And they have been struggling on the wrong, they were doing the wrong thing by struggling to assimilate people who, why do you assimilate people? And then you fail now, instead of coming back to the drain board to bring back what you took away from them, you are instead, you are instead dragging and preferred losing our, 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 our military forces for a senseless war. A war that doesn't benefit anybody. You are fighting against somebody whom you don't even know. The speak as if others are not fighting against. <laughs> no, but you are fighting against somebody. People. No, we are talking about fighting against people carrying guns, Senator. Let's not be. Let's not lose sight of the fact that the why is the military not in Bafusa? No, the problem is that the military being first of all on the ground is over a political issue. What are they? What are they doing on the ground? Okay, let, let, me, let, let me conclude before. Let, let, let me let me also conclude. Conclude. Let's conclude. Yeah, my conclusion is that the, the government should do some justice in its redistribution of the resources of this country. <laughs> Over the years, we have seen the government concentrating invest, uh, resources for investment in particular regions. Take for instance, I don't see any reason why so many projects have been carried in the South region, and then just one project that the South, the South West region has been asking over the years, the Limbe Deep Seaport, cannot be built. Everybody has told us that, I mean the foreigners who give the money, that Limbe has the best site for a deep seaport. It was trumpeted one time and yes. how long we discovered. What, 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 what is blocking the limit? The what, well, let the government do justice. So far, there have been distributive injustice by the government. The government should stop it. They should do justice. And then on decentralization that the government has been trumpeting recently, I was shocked when I saw the Minister of Decentralization uh, handing cars to... In, from which budget was he buying those cars? Okay. That budget is supposed um, to be money that has been handed to the to the regions to, to manage. When you give them cars, it's as if you are giving them... Uh, Steve? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Indicating that we have to leave the studio now. It's time for the program to to end. And um, Steve, you're pulling a blanket too much to, your, to you to call yourself instead of... You're talking about the Southwest, Southwest. No, no. Anyway, I'm, you're talking I, about... Your I said here that if you go to the South region, <laughs> there are no roads. I've been to the okay, South region. Okay, thank you. So it's a general Surprisingly, problem. they have held power for 40 years. There are no roads and, in the South region. I know with bias. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we come to the end of today's edition of Press Hour on CRTV. We spoke about Tato Brandin, uh, Boya University explosion, and the killing of several people in Northwest and South Rosia, asking why it's continuing. We also talk about Parliament and look at what the civilians have been benefiting from their own part of the budget, which is the public investment budget. I want to thank Senator Leke Besongo Akemfo Philip, a UPC uh, supporter from the Southwest region, Senator Kemende Henry, uh, he's of the SDF in the Northwest region. Ojong Stephen is editor of the Median Newspaper. Joe Temuncho is senior journalist working with CRTV. I am Moki. Edwin Kinzaka in Yaoundi. Thank you for watching.